Yes, yeah. sir. Happy New Year's. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> now you see this on Facebook. This is live. <laughs> he talked about like we ain't even here. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is that any better? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year. You know what, man? I ain't seen you since last year. What's going on? You know I ain't seen you since last year neither. Why? We cough, we cross over to a new year. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Pastor? <laughs> hey, I tell you, this is the awesome start of the new year. Hey, man. We're hey, able to have hey, another man. radio show. God Wait, graced upon us. There and, you uh, go. You know awesome. what? I got to, I want you to do something right quick. Okay. Since this is a new year's and I noticed, notice, you notice I said that? Mm -hmm. I said I noticed. Boy, I'm doing good this year. Starting off, this is our first show of the year. <laughs> wow, man, I am so excited. Yeah. But uh, awesome. I want to introduce you. Who are you? I'm Pastor Charles Emery, Assistant Pastor Redeemed Faith Fellowship, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hey, Amen. And I'm Pastor Walter Owens, uh, Senior Pastor of New Life International Ministry right here in our lovely city of Milwaukee. And we are so honored every week to be right here on Joy 1340 Amen. and 98.7 FM. That's right. Man, I, I am so what excited. Really I see some great things are going to happen this year. Oh, yeah. It's a Don't lot of things. It. Yes, you know, and one thing that we were sharing, I, I just love saying this, last year is that <laughs> we're going into this new year. And one thing that I noticed, Pastor, that uh, the previous year, God said this year he's going to do a shaking. He's yeah. going to do a renewing. He's going to started bringing God's people, his people, back unto him. Yes, he is. And I'm so blessed to be a part of that. And in working with you every week, I mean, I just want our listeners to know, um, that's uh, listening to us and those who are joining us on Facebook, be every week when I leave out of here, I feel totally inspired. Hallelujah. You know, because I can see that you be, that you be, that you be, I know this song right here. I know I can't get it out. I'll tell you what, but I can get this out. We're gonna have a great show today. Amen. And uh, you know what? Mm. You know, a couple of months ago, we were blessed to have um from the Atlanta, Georgia area, mm. a sister Jackie Dotson. She was the author of uh, her newest book is called titled More of You God. Yeah. And you know, Pastor, I when I was reading this here and I asked you to join me, I was blessed uh, sharing with my wife last week. And I was saying, honey, you know, this is a new year. What can we do starting off our first new show uh, about letting God's people know that he is still in control and he's going to bless us. If, oh, yeah, we just, if we just stay focused on him and trust in his word. That's the main thing, trusting in this word and what he said, what he would do for us. We would be totally blessed. Uh, I was reading out of her book. I'd like to just title our show around uh, this year, uh, some things that I, I read. Uh, I saw something in January the 6th. Are you with me? Not yet. It's going to take a minute to get it It's going to take a minute to get yeah, it there. I have to share your book. First. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to read the day six. Go to, okay. uh, to, to January 7th. Because those two, two days <clears throat> I came together, and it's going to help me title what I, today's show is, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to read six, and you go to seven. It says, on January 6th, Jesus, today, I want you to go on a trip with me. This life you have planned just for me is beautiful. I know you are for me. You will never leave me right now. Lord, not every situation in my life is looking favorable. However, you created me in your image. Therefore, you have a plan and a purpose for me. Lord, I'm available for you. I want to ride with you, Lord. 
Point me in the right direction. Father, impact your wisdom, wisdom and guide me on this adventure. My journey will not be easy. There will be trials and tribulations I will face. You will be with me. I shall have the victory. Victory is mine. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I trust you, Lord. Living with more of you, God. That's awesome. Come on, so now. Awesome. come on, come on, Pastor. You know, uh, I really love that because, you know, when 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 you were saying about the adventures mm -hmm. that we're gonna have, the trials and tribulations that we may uh, face, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I I just love that. I, I really do. I really do. Uh, can you read just just read it? No, out there. Uh, no. Just read seven. It says, Jehovah God, you are with me. You know all my heart's desire. You know what I need. I reverence you and delight myself in you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I want the life you want me to have. I love you, Jesus. Father, you do a splendid work in me today. Lord, you said you are going to do a new thing in me. This is my season. I choose to serve you, God. Lord, I want you to use me for your, to, uh, to your glory. Have your way with me, Lord Jesus. I'm putting on your armor, girding up for the encounter and the calling you have on my life. There is no greater calling on my life than to serve the purpose and plan you have for me uh, to accomplish. It is an honor to serve in your kingdom. Father, use me, Lord, to your glory. Uh, more of you, God. Amen, amen. You know, amen. I, I just heard you was reading when you said uh, the season. Yeah, this is a new season. It's a new season, new opportunity. And, uh, uh, I like uh, when she said, Jesus, today I want you to go on a trip That's with it. me. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it sounds like God wants us to go on a journey. On a journey, him. yeah. And you know, and the thing about a journey, you know, I was thinking about that, um, is that when you when you get ready to go on a trip, you make plans. Okay. You okay. know, you set up, you, you know, the, the navigation, you know, to get to where you need to go a certain amount of time. You plan on expecting to get to a certain place. But then sometimes distractions can come in the way. You might forgot to do something before you left the house, and you're like, "Okay, I can't, I can't leave. I gotta go back to the house now to finish my my project I was working on before I left." It might be something important for your job you need to do, Amen. you know, and Amen. you have to go, go, you know, to the go back to to the job to finish something that you should have done before you left, you know. So as many things can arise in our preparation for our journey, but the main focus. It's about the Lord today. Amen. So my, uh, today, remember I said at the top of the show, I have a title. Yeah. And I like the title of the today's show. Pastor, do you find it difficult in seeking God? You know, that that's a really good question. You know, because there are a lot of people, you know, find it difficult because our focus is off. You know, if your focus is not on seeking the Lord, you seek your own agenda. Mm -hmm. You set your own plans and your own purpose for your life and how you're going to live your life according to your own standards, which reminds me of Philippians chapter 3. Okay, let's go there right quick. Yeah, Philippians okay. chapter 3. Okay. You know, and I mean, this is really something that's stuck in my spirit because we have to keep the word in our hearts uh -huh. in order to have a, a, a smooth journey. You said Philippians 3? Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, some, some tell me that you're going to go to verse 7 through 10. That's right, 7 through 10. That's <laughs> let's, it. Let, let's go, let's go, let's go. And it says, uh, uh, Paul was talking to the church of Philippi. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Uh -huh. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of, of, of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, and being made conformable unto his death. You know, and the thing that, that really captivates my attention is, you know, when we have a difficult time seeking the Lord, you got to check where you are positionally. Mm. You know, where are you? Are you in a position to find God? The Bible tells us, you know, that we talked about, you know, in Jeremiah, where the Lord was talking about searching for him. You know, 
And you know, like we talked about, there are going to be some times, like it says here in our notes we, we had this morning, at mm -hmm. times finding God seems difficult. Even for those who have a relationship with him, changes in life bring uncertainty. The loss of a job, a divorce, a, pro a job promotion, the birth of a child. Some have referred to these unexpected changes in life as divine interruptions. Even when the change is positive, it can be interrupt, interrupt our feelings of well-being and leave us feeling alone. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. See, it's uh, now. Yeah, yeah, you really did, <laughs> Pastor. You really did. It's because you said at times finding God yeah. seems difficult. And that's what we was tied in our message today. Do we find it difficult seeking him? Yeah. But then I heard you over in Philippians, you were saying that you, you were reading that to gain, that was a gain that was yeah, lost. Yeah, gain, right. Uh, looking over in the, uh, uh, Sister uh, uh, Jackie's book, mm -hmm. uh, More of You, God. It is, uh, I see here in the notes, he said, Jesus, today I want to go on a trip, I said that earlier, yeah. and have planned just for <laughs> me that is beautiful. Therefore, you have a plan and a purpose for my life. But then you were sharing with us all the difficult things that we're going on, that we have right, suffered right. last year, Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and somehow some of those things are rolling over into the new year. You remember last week, Pastor, I shared with uh, our listeners is that it's like being in your car. You have a windshield, right. which is the window to the world. You have the, the small mirror, your rear view mirror, looking at your past, mm -hmm. and then the two side mirrors <clears throat> that you study looking in the past. So if we're seeking God, we should be able to put and leave those things behind us. That makes Absolutely. sense? Yes, it does. You know, because you were saying that I could even lose my job or divorce or family members, you know, the pandemic, everything that's going on that happened to us last year, even when God blesses us, we still find it that at times we are interrupted by our feelings and our well-being. And leave us feeling alone. And you know why? Come on. It's because if our focus is not on the Lord and it's only on what we accomplish in this life, mm -hmm. we still find ourselves empty. You know, so when you're empty, you're not, you know, not satisfied with the things you have accomplished. Because if you if you're not lining up with God's word and in your life on a daily uh, uh, a daily walk or daily journey, we talk about journey. Uh -huh. so if you're not walking in the journey with the Lord, then What's going to happen in your journey? There's going to be some ill feelings. There's yes. going to be some, some, some discontentment. You're going to feel alone. You feel like God is really not there. Even though God keeps blessing you and promoting you, yet you still feel like that ain't enough. Amen. Amen. You know, I like that because of, of the confirmation. I, I have a sister, uh, Jackie's book, North You Got It, and I'm looking at uh, uh, January 6th. And when you was talking about that journey, I, you know, just show how, this is a, a, a devotional book, mm -hmm. and you just shared with me a confirmation what she had, what she had put in her book when yeah. you were talking about the journey. Because in January six it says, "My journey will not be easy. There will be a trials and tribulation." You were speaking about. I will face. You will be with me. I shall have victory, and victory is mine. That's right. So if I seek after Christ, if I'm understanding you, Pastor, if I continue to keep my focus on Christ, seeking after him, there will be victory. Yeah, it's still victory, even though the trials and the tribulations do come in our lives mm -hmm. along the journey. You know, there's going to be some distractions along the journey. Come on. But you got to also be reminded that even though I'm on this journey, I still have the peace of God. I still have the love of God. I still got God's concern and his care about me. He's still surrounding me with his presence. He's still protecting me. You know, he gives you an expecting end. But like Jeremiah 29, 11, so I know the thoughts that the Lord, the Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. It says, and I will be found in you, said the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places I have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place when I cause you to be carried away captive. So what God is reminding is giving us a reassurance that just because you were driven into a place of exile, a captivity, God says, even in that, I still have a plan for you. 
I like that. You know, I still have a plan for you. And that plan is thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. What's the expected end? At the end of my journey, there's some satisfaction. There's uh -huh. some prizes. There's okay. some accomplishments at the end of my journey. So as I continue to put God first, like like I said, do you find it difficult seeking God? Sometimes we can be it be difficult seeking God because I, I'm, I'm wrong motive. We can have the wrong motives, you know. Some people seek God with the intention just to get the blessings of God because you're blessed. I'm gonna seek God because you're blessed. You follow me? Because you're blessed, I want to get what you got. So it sounds like I'm, I'm coming to God with not a pure heart. Without right, not a pure heart with hidden agenda. So when I do not receive the blessings that Pastor Charles have, now I get mad at God. Yeah. And I'm asking God, well, he's got it. Why don't I have Exactly. It? Wrong attitude. <laughs> come on, come on. See, come on. see the attitude could be wrong because we're selfish. You know, we got hidden agendas, I mentioned. You know, so we, we, we're coming to manipulate God to get what I want from God. You know, so like you're blessed. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I want to get what he got. So, and God doesn't do it. You're right. We get mad at God. I said, God, but well, I thought you said, you know, the thoughts and plans to think towards me, the thoughts of peace and not of evil. Lord, this seems evil towards me. Yeah, how come I'm not getting blessed because he's blessed? How come I'm not getting this house or this car or this promotion on a job? How come all these things ain't happening to me, but it's happening to him? We didn't, we serve the same God. Oh, do we? See what I'm talking about? Do we? Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, think about where's your relationship? You know, that's why I love when Paul was talking about, he said, all this stuff I gained in the natural, he said, I counted as dumb. You know, it, it doesn't have no value. You know, so I'm willing to let go of all my accomplishments, all my degrees, all, all the things that I did to be successful in life. I'm willing to let it all go. Why? Because I want to win Christ. Amen. Because I was looking at today, January, uh, what she has written for on uh, January 7th, Jehovah God, you are with me. You know all of my heart desires. You know what I need. I reverence you and delight myself in you, Lord. Now, see, that's I, I like what you were just sharing with us. What is your heart's desire? Yes. You know, yes. a lot of people don't want to go through the work. They don't want to no, go they through the trials work. and tribulations. I thought you did the work for me, then I just did what you got. Oh, oh, okay. So that's why you sitting out there outside <laughs> the door looking for <laughs> Getting mad at your own self because you didn't do it right. <laughs> why, why do we both have to work? How come you can't just do it and I just get the benefit from it? Because it is very important to remember that in finding God, the promise of Jeremiah, as you read in 29, 13, and 14, is never nullified by our subjective subjective feeling. Just because we feel that God is far from us doesn't mean that he is. That's right. So in other words, we need to change our mindset. Change our mindset. Change our motive. Yeah. Go into a new year looking for the blessing. That's it. If That's you put it. in the work. If you put in the work. And, and, some, and the main, the main um, process of the work is having faith in God. You know, and not only just being, having faith, but doing what God instructed you to do wholeheartedly. Not half-hearted, not stagnancy. You know, when you get into the place where you say, okay, God, you know, you call me to be a minister for you, then that means I got to put in the work to study the, about what I'm called to do, learn my position, do what God called me to do by being that witness. He says, go make disciples of men. So I have to do the work of what God told me to do in order to reap the benefits. I can't be half-hearted and expect to get the benefits. You know, so I'm like, if I'm cutting myself off from the promise God has for me, I never get the prize. Well, it sounds like that if we do the work, uh, God it would make it easy because if He sends us out to do His work, it's not going to be hard and challenging. No, it is. Okay. Uh, well, let, let, he let's says it's smooth. It. He makes the pathway smooth for you. Okay. Okay. Rough okay, places okay. smooth, crooked places straight. Right. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Because I wanted people to understand it. Because people say, well, us. That's a lot God asks. Suspects so much from me, but what what are you expecting from Him? Right, right. You know, I love what it mm -hmm. said over in the book of uh, what is that? Hebrews thirteen and five. Mm -hmm. He He has told us that He would never leave us nor forsake us. Right. So, if you seek after Him, even the, when the changes is positive, you were just talking about it'll make us feel alone, right? Right. 
But why is it that we just want to continue rejecting him? As you were saying, we don't want to do the work. Let you do it. But I'm going to claim all the fame and glory because it's all about me. And I've asked people over the last few months, why are you steady coming to me telling me about your same problem instead of wanting to find out and seeking God that God is bigger than your problem will ever be? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, because people are not willing to shift. We got to shift sometimes. And what I mean by that is like we can get stuck on the same cycle, but we don't want to shift out of that cycle into the plan of God. Uh -huh. So, you know, just like, you know, they get called the roller coaster syndrome. You know, I'm in Christ today, then I'm out of him later on today. I'm back in, then I'm out again. I'm back in, I'm back out. So I'm on a roller coaster of up and down, up and down in my relationship with Christ, but I'm expecting God to bless me. God wants you to be consistent. So that means you got to shift out of your mentality, get the mind of Christ, allow the Holy Spirit to come into you, and begin to fill you with the presence of God like never before, and give you the power to do what's, what, what's right and righteous in the presence of God. I love that, Pastor, because I, uh, I'm, go with me right quick over to Psalm 77. And I think this is going to help us out with you response to our listeners. Psalm 77. And uh, what I want to go here, the seventh, the seventh, eighth verse, Psalm 77. Uh, yeah, Psalm 77, verse 7. Will the Lord cast off forever, and will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Hmm. Has his promise failed forever? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he? In anger, shut up his tender mercy. And I said, this is my anguish. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So in other words, that, that, that God is saying is that I sent you out, Pastor. I sent all my listeners out to do the work. I sent you out to receive the blessings that I have for you. Right. So um, we should continue this year. This, this year, starting this year. starting today, this year, January, we need to seek God more than we have. We ever. do, we do. Yeah. And if you know, at the start of the new year, we have the opportunity to get things right now. Amen. You know, God Amen. give us another chance. Amen. Well, you know, Pastor, I'm looking at the the clock on the wall. It's getting to be that time. You know, uh, before we get out of here, I, I want you to, as always, to give us a prayer and uh, uh, a word of of comfort, but I just want to uh, thank our dear sister uh, Jackie Dodson for writing the book More of You, God. And if you want to get this book, go to her website. It's, it's God's Divine Journey com. You can also find it on eBay and order it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor, I want you quick. Let's 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 get a word right in. Right. Quick. Okay. I just want to encourage all of our listeners today. You know, if you have a difficult time finding God in your, your life, begin to just ex ex examine your heart to see where you are in your relationship with the Lord. And I guarantee God reveal himself to you in a way you have never known him. So Lord God, we thank you for this new year. You gave us another start to do another radio show. We pray that it would be, Father, an inspiration and encouragement to the listeners, so God, that we have something that we would say that would captivate their attention and help change their lives forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay.